I'm, 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 i um, so it was a one. That's me. Yeah. Got it. That sounded real country. Hi, y'all. Hey, what's going on? Yippity doo dah. Um, so we had the extended weekend here in the U.S. We all had Monday. Off. Well, okay. We had Monday off. Some of you guys out there didn't. Hey, Jason. I, of course, went to Disney. Disneyland, Disney yeah. Magic Kingdom, as it's called here in Florida. Uh, so if you checked in, you saw me. Uh, we were having a good old time. Yo, Fernando. Okay. <laughs> Frost. What did he say? He say, hola, Fernando and Dean. A queso es viejo y potrido. Donde está el baño? Sorry, that's the only Spanish I know. I was going to say, where did you just go crazy? I, was like, <laughs> I saw good, that and good. I was like, what? Okay. That's good, that's good, man. So as I was at Magic Kingdom, I got to ride the uh, cars there with my daughter. You went to, actually, the Tampa Bay Grand Prix. Yep. Uh, that was kind of... The Grand Prix is where you drive the electric cars inside. The go cars. You know, the, yeah. the go fast cars. Yeah. And you, did you drive? Uh, yeah, I drive. Of course I have to drive. Yeah. You know me. Did you uh, put your daughter into the wall? <laughs> no, actually, that was another people. Uh, they crash. But she's fine. It wasn't like it was. It wasn't like the in Indianapolis 500. Did you mm. see that crash? Dude, these people, they actually, like, they think they are in the 500. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. Anyone that goes to one of those indoor outdoor racetracks and you know drives it like i get it if you got a minivan driving one of those little go-karts is probably the coolest thing in the world um but you're not testing out to become the next nascar indianapolis driver i mean slow it down we're there for fun people yep. i mean these guys take these turns and it, i guess it's because you have the helmet on you think you're, oh you feel it definitely like, oh you feel yeah it. man Ooh, yeah. look at dude i got pole position <laughs> that's right that's right i kicked that five-year-old's yeah. I put that to the wall. Suck it. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. 12 year old. No, no. 45 year old dude over there like, I'm the greatest, bitch. Yeah. We're just here to have fun, man. Just here to have fun. <laughs> We're just trying Pretty to drive much. some electric go-karts. Unlike us at Disney where they've taken all the fun out of it, they just put a metal rod down the middle and you have a gas pedal. Yeah, that's you try it. to steer. And of course the idiot in front of you just keeps... Ah, take the foot off the gas. Hey, <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. It was yeah, like, yeah, it's okay. driving Haley crazy. It's yeah. funny. Um, Arizona Heat checking in. Hey, man, I'm with you. It, it's been a hot couple days. I don't know yes. about you guys, but we haven't gotten rain. We got rain like once last week, which was really nice. Yep. Actually, it rains every day I want to go running. That's what I've come to conclude, that every day I want to go running, it rains. So that really sucks. So Lou, Chad, Kevin, uh, John, Chris, Juan... Roger, Frank, Bon, thank you for watching. Cole, real quick, no, I did not upload the video for the best rear view camera. I haven't shot it yet. That's actually tomorrow's. Uh, we were going to shoot it today, but I made the mistake of accidentally leaving all my SD cards at home. They're sitting on my desk. Good job. It was a really long weekend, so I didn't think about it. So, no, that is going to go up this week for sure. I'll probably shoot it tomorrow and hopefully get it up Thursday or Friday. I also have the new $15 Amazon camera coming yeah. uh, because Fernando wanted us to shoot one of those just because you guys ask that question a lot. Yeah. So we'll call it the most hated backup. backup. We won't call it that, but that's basically no, how I feel I was about thinking it. Like, the biggest piece of crap you could yeah. find. Louisiana's getting rain. Yeah. Well, that's good. Last week it cooled down to 102. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was bitching because it was 100 here when we were driving. Oh my God. So yeah. we were at the water park in the morning, which is the relaxing, lazy river, but apparently that was too relaxing because by, so by, by 5 o'clock we're like, well, let's go take a nap. Yeah. So uh, he asked, do I need a special wiring harness for... What was that one? Uh, uh, Chavero, Chavero Morales, he said, do I need a special wiring harness to install a head unit on the 2007 Mazda CX-9? You may need the uh, 
RP4, MAZ, whatever it is, go to bestkits.com. Yep. And just bestkits.com and fill out your information and it'll tell you MAZ. If it has it there, then yeah, you're going to need it. Uh, that'll have your steering wheel controls and backup camera retention and all that, or backup camera option, yeah. reverse wired, all that. It's a bit smart harness. So, yeah. all right. Kevin, Kevin, say, what are you, which one do you think about? The head units, which one is better, 4200 or the 9903S? I think he asked me that question earlier today, um, and I asked him if he'd seen our video that we did on that. Okay. Uh, that really comes down to personal preference. I mean, th when it when it comes to the the Kenwood operating system and the Pioneer operating system, we've talked about this before, but they are two totally different operating systems, and the head units have two totally different sounds. But the guys that it's like Windows and OS X. You either get one or you don't. Um, a lot of people like the 9903 because it has the better screen. Some people like the 4200 because it's a Pioneer and they're big Pioneer fans. Plus it has a detachable screen. Feature for feature, they're almost identical. I mean, there's little things here and there that are a little bit different. Some people like the Kenwood because it has a lot of the DSP features. Um, the realizer and all those things built into that DSP section. Yeah. That, Hi, hola, Ricardo. That Pioneer doesn't have, but Pioneer has the auto EQ feature mm -hmm. that a lot of people like. People like the Kenwood because it has loudness, and the Pioneer doesn't. So mm -hmm. it's a tough call. Uh, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stand firm on right. either one. Yeah. Because you really have to touch them. Now, if you're one of those people that lives in a place where you you have no stores around you. And you can't get to yeah that's it fro fro yeah yeah froze. that's the part froze yeah the RP4 MAZ11 correct you thank got you got it yeah um that's the part you need for your Mazda CX9 yeah yep okay so it really comes down to you almost have to see them watch our video on that and just take a look I mean see what I mean you can almost watch the full video on the 9903 and the full video on the 4200 and, and get an better. idea yeah. of what operating system makes sense to you and how many times we have to go through to get to a specific feature that's a lot and which one you like it first. okay yeah okay so Mike Mike this is really nice you guys are my source for the state of the art sound system thank you Mike in California that's Thank you, pretty Mike. cool, man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, man. The HDMI source randomly will get snowy, snowy sometimes while I'm driving. I have the Pioneer 8200 NAX with the Apple adapter on the 12, 12, feet, 12 feet HDMI for use by people on the back seat. Cool. So. The HDMI is probably too long for one, and also the Apple to HDMI adapter is made by crap. So, like the one we have that does this video that you're watching, mm -hmm. for the first two and a half inches, we've put two or three pieces of heat shrink over it because we ran into the same problem where it just gets loose inside there. It's so like a band. Yeah. You may want to pick yourself up another one and also a foot or two of uh, half inch heat shrink and just he shrinked the whole thing up a couple times so it's a bit more rigid and not so weak. The other thing yeah. is that's a really long HDMI cable. Feet, yeah. You might want to look at something around six feet. Yeah. Uh, this is a car, they're really not made, I mean in a house, yeah, cool. Um, I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't work at 12 feet, but the reality, uh, the reality is six feet is probably more reasonable. All right, so Kevin. Kevin say, hey guys, any way to use navigation from the iPhone to a Pioneer 3800 VHS other than Waze? No. You can use NavMe to power up or to do that, but no, it's not a CarPlay navigation feature. The only other thing you can do is add the AVIC U280 add-on navigation system mm -hmm. to it, which is about 350 bucks, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's it. Other than that, you're going to want to upgrade to maybe one of the new CarPlay radios when they come out in July. They'll be a lot more reasonable. Ah, Froze, $15, $15 camera, it's money well spent, buddy. <laughs> yeah, uh, you exactly. can blame Fernando for that one. I'm not a fan, <laughs> but we get a lot of questions on that yeah. camera, so we're yeah. just going to shoot the video. And, and you guys want to see why, what is about that video. All right, Jeff. On my way, on my way to pull the trigger on the 4200. Thanks for the reviews. That's good. You'll love um, it. Ricardo, hi from Mexico. 
Now, okay, back up to that, the buying, pulling the trigger on the 4200. Right now, Pioneer has rebates on all of the 4201, 7201, 6201s. So you might want to check in that maybe spending whatever it is to go up to the 01 status. You'll oh, get the backup camera. It. Oh, you already bought yeah. it. Never mind. Moving on. Um, all right. So question: One positive and negative wire from the amp to the sub box inside inside the box I have two positive and two negative wires one positive and one negative to the each of the two subs yeah one it's phase and the other one it's out of phase is so, this possible or I am missing something I'm using a eight dollar Amazon face shaker so yeah I mean you can hook a dual voice call woofer out of phase it basically yeah. is just gonna sit in the middle because it, it, it won't move up or down so when you're looking at a woofer you should have positive here negative here negative here positive here so that they cross like this uh, if if you have them so they're both positive here both negative here that's not gonna be right and one voice call will be out of phase with the other and what happens is the woofer just doesn't move it when bass plays it just kind of goes <clears throat> yeah and uh, that's totally possible but you wouldn't get a tick out of it um, we gotta do the uh, the uh, the battery pop test for the subwoofer. Okay. That don't let me forget to do that. Right. There, if you take a uh, uh, like a nine volt drill battery, I mean a nine volt battery really isn't enough to move a big woofer, but you could take like a nine volt drill battery and pop a woofer, and it should either move out or move in. But if you have them hooked out of phase, it's just gonna sit there in the middle and do nothing. Um, don't let me forget. We'll we'll shoot that video here yeah, in the next right. week or so and get that up to show you guys what we're talking about on that one. Good good question. All, All right. right. So Kevin, Kevin say uh, for the forty two hundred, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he say this will be on my two thousand five Subaru. I don't care about the OnStar uh, if he's retaining it or not, but I want Android phone integration. I will keep in the stock both speakers and the amp. What adapters do I need? On a Subaru? Yeah. I think Subaru's there again. It's just a basic harness for a Subaru. I don't well, know. Uh, if you have like... Well, you have steering wheel controls, you're going to need a CW, uh, SWIRC. There again, bestkits.com best will list the parts. The Bose amplifier in that, I, I believe it's just an analog input on that. I don't think it's anything special that year. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hard. Just have the remote turn on. You have to hook up to uh, turn on the factory amplifier. Steering wheel controls be an SWIRC there again pack steering wheel control you could also do the pack CP2 steering wheel control if you want to do multi-touch so that you can have like one button that answers and hangs up if it's got steering wheel controls all right so Kenny Kenny say put in a DDX 790 794 in my 2010 Optima is the Maestro the same for all vehicles with a programming flash or it's a vehicle specific. It's vehicle specific and radio specific. So when you're plugging it, when you're programming a Maestro, for one, you have to go to the website and make sure that your car is compatible. Once you've done that, it'll give you a list of the features it can retain from the factory. Uh, you know, most of the time, it's obviously steering wheel controls, uh, sometimes doors, chimes, uh, gauges. And then from there, if there's any extended features that it can also retain, it's gonna tell you all that. When you plug it in to program it, you're going to need the serial number off the radio, uh, as well as you have to tell it what steering wheel, steering wheel you have in the car. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of questions you have to answer. If you go and watch, we have an install video we did on a Mustang, I think, and it, we sh and also the Toyota Corolla, mm -hmm. Corolla recently, uh, that show all the steps that we went through to program a. Uh, a maestro piece yeah uh, and, and don't be surprised if you have to do it twice I will say that if you are programming it and you have steering wheel controls don't just check it and say yeah that's cool read what each steering wheel control does and move them if necessary because they like to put stupid features that don't belong and that's just something they do I don't know maestro yay okay all right so Jeff Jeff say you guys ever have luck in starting a flash mount USB HDMI plugged in like like the kind of to make a nice plug for the dash yeah so <laughs> um, 
He wants a flush mount HDMI. Yeah, yeah. So like right behind Fernando is this guy here. It's a USB HDMI adapter. Mm -hmm. The problem with it, it works great. The problem with it is it's only that long. Like four inch. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's this long. So if you're mounting it, like when we do them in the Jeep dashes, it works great because on the, the Jeep, it's, it's right there. So as long as you have some place up front that you can mount it, it works awesome. Anything longer than that, like there's a six foot version of it, the yeah. pack didn't bring it in because the USB didn't work on it. Um, so that's what we end up using. Otherwise, if we can't get that, we just run a six footer into the glove box. Yeah. Now, with that being said, if you go on to Amazon and search, uh, PC U or PC HDMI port, something along those lines. They make a four screw hole, male on one side, female on the other, flush mount HDMI adapter for your PC that you can drill a hole and flush mount it in. Let's say a, an armrest or a glove box or something like that. Uh, we also have those. They come in like chrome or black, and I think I got those on Amazon. Just searching like flush mount HDMI. Yeah. Um, and those, you, you just, it just has, you know, plugs in. All right. So, Jeff, I got a rebate on mine too. So he Okay, good. Very good. Rebate. Good. Yeah. You got your rebate. That was rebate. He, that's what he bought it for. Yeah. Yeah. The rebate was nice. <laughs> okay. So, guys, there is any aux to USB converter to something like that? Aux to USB converter? Mm -hmm. Well, they make an aux to USB, but they're not going to work on any of these radios. Mm -hmm. I mean, Amazon sells that, um, but they're, they're not. They're not made for these because yeah. they don't have the wake up protocols that these radios need to see. All right, Clayton, it's difficult to install a car alarm security. Is it difficult? Is it? Well, it depends. What, what, what did he say? Car. Is that what he said? Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, is it difficult to install an alarm? Yeah. yeah, it could be a real pain in the butt depending on what kind of car you're working on. I mean, I, I you know, we do it for a living and it still sucks. So, um, yeah, not a fan. You okay. Know? Julio, hey guys, I have an Alpine MRV V500M installed in my Corvette C6, uh, pumping me front and rear. Really? Slow, slow it down, man. <laughs> I didn't pumping uh, front and rears. I'm looking to get in a JVL steel box. Oh, seal box, I guess. Okay. Seal box, and I want to know if the 5 channel amp will be enough to push it. So he has the five channel. Yeah, I mean it's a hundred and it's like two hundred watts, I think, for that. Two hundred. Mm -hmm. I think it's been two hundred and three hundred watts on that sub channel. If you're just gonna do a ten, yeah, it'll do it fine. I mean, we've done. We typically, when we're using that five channel amp, we do four six and a halfs, and let's say a Pioneer uh, ten or twelve down firing enclosure mm -hmm. seems to be real popular with that, uh, or a ten inch in a ported box. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be enough power. Plus, the other thing, too, is the box you're going to have to put in that car is going to be kind of tiny, so you're not going to get a real ton. You're going to get adequate amount of ace out of it. Okay, so, Chris, what is you guys' opinion on the 4200, 4201? With the rebate, I should wait to July or later? Get the rebate. Do it. Get the rebate. They're not coming out with a new one anytime soon. 4200, 4201 is not... According to Pioneer, now that the new radios have come out, the other shoes dropped, uh, they're not updating that radio and probably till November or possibly January. Uh, when we were talking with Eddie last week, or the week before last about it, he seems to think that they might even be waiting until January. Uh, they showed at the uh, Android conference, they showed a radio that's going to do wireless Android Auto. They were the only ones that showed a radio there and the only ones that are going to do wireless Android Auto at the moment. But they're still probably not going to actually release it until January. So if there's a rebate on a 4200, there again, the sales people that work for Pioneer don't even know because he was like, yeah, we have a rebate, so who knows what's going on with the rebate. But Pioneer always has a rebate during the summertime. So, yeah, scoop one up. Get a good deal on it for sure. All right. John, uh, Dean, yes. does the coil rub means my sub is blown? Does it color what? Coil rub. So a lot of people like to take their subwoofers and they do this while they're pushing them and they'll get a And what's actually happened is you're not rubbing the coil. You're making it not round anymore. It's going kind of egg shaped because you're pushing the cone down. So 
really the only way to do it is to actually out of the box grab it put it in here and do this or use some form of a a, a, a um, tone generator that moves it up and down but if it is then yeah it's blown or, or it's a wine and spider no or if you're getting spider. if you're get if you're I mean when you do this you're 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 making it go odd shaped you're not making it round anymore uh, so it has nothing it, it's if you're getting a crunchy sound it's because it's not round if you're getting a crunchy sound and you can lift it out of the box and you can actually push on it from underneath and, and hold it and you get a or you just right in the dead center and you get a then yeah it, or when you're playing it you get a sound then yeah it's 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 done the the a lot of times what happens is the voice coil bobbin will break apart weld back together and it'll still play it's just going to make crunchy sound now uh it's burnt and at that point it's no good there's a lot of different ways for a subwoofer to blow trust me uh, -huh. uh it's still amazing how many different ways i i still see today yeah uh not all woofers just stop working some of them the voice coil will burn some of them seize up some of them just make noise all kinds of weird shit so yeah if it's making noise while it's playing and you can hear the crunchy sound that's bad okay all right so let me see i'm getting here uh cole i'm getting a cloudy noise from my sound system cloudy noise yes okay. cloudy noise when the sound it's down so even when it's a zero you're getting floor noise? Is it like is it like a static? Is it a, what does it say cloudy noise? Cloudy noise. Like clouds in the sky. Yes. What is a cloud? Cloudy. I didn't know clouds made noises. I don't know. Uh if you're getting okay. If you're getting noise when the volume is turned all the way down. Wait. I'm waiting. Say hi to Tony. Tony? Tony from UK. Yes. Oh hey Tony from UK. Different this is like different day, but hello. That's Corey from Australia yeah. too. Um Yes, so okay, clarity noise. All right, so most radios have what's called zero bit noise detection, meaning when they automatically go to zero, they shut off all the sound out of the radio. There's no sound coming from the radio. So that means that any noise you get pat while you're on zero has to be coming from an amplifier or an EQ if it has them, which could be the, 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 um, the volume is up too high, the gain, I'm sorry, gain, why did I call it volume? The gain is up too high in the amplifier. Okay. What you may want to do is turn the gains down as low as possible, turn the volume up, and then see where you may have your gain set wrong. Is where I'm long of short of this. Check the gains. Okay. Hey, Robin. So Roger, Roger, about the face of the subwoofer. Sorry, hard to explain via comments. I have two subs yes. in the box. Yes. One sub plays out of face. The yes. other plays in face. Okay. Both doing subs. This. Yes. Both subs wire at the same way happens all the time they're just little stickers sometimes people put the stickers on wrong um yes it's very common for a box to do this just take one it doesn't matter which one and switch it <laughs> what are you <laughs> i was doing the, i was doing okay. the out of phase yeah because then you get you get no base so yeah it sounds to me like maybe the subwoofer might have been put together wrong or the stickers are wrong uh or the wire got marked wrong it, it yeah, it happens it, all the time. Uh, just just change one woofer. That's all you have to do, so that they're both in phase. You, you know, you want there again. If we showed the pop test, you both want woofers to do this, do this. If they do this, just switch one so that they're both doing this again. All right. So, uh, Miguel, Miguel, say I have a charger with a Beat audio system, okay. but I want to add more bass. Now looking to boom in nothing, just like a nice sound. What is the best thing to do? Uh, I, I tell you right off the top of my head, if you've got that particular car, the Kicker pre-made 212, like the Comp R, Comp R? Comp R 212 box, or even the L7 212 box, fits very snugly, right, snugly. Fits very, yeah, okay, snugly right between the two humps that are in the trunk. You could slide that right in, uh, put a nice five to 1200 watt on it, matching those two subs respectively tap off the rear factory subwoofer for your high low and you're done and it'll bang nice and hard okay so sebastian say where's a good single damn flip out 
I mean, there's good brand. A Pioneer makes right now. They have currently they have this 68 and 7800, and then in July they'll have the flip out that is Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So. I'd say for the win, check out Pioneer. You can go to PioneerElectronics.com and check out the new one that's coming out. It's going to be the only NEX flip out uh, that'll have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. All right. So, Corey, Corey, say, hey, guys, how was Walt Disney? Walt Disney was very fun and very hot. Uh, water Park, Magic Kingdom, Epcot. Try to go to Disney Springs, which is also known as Downtown Disney, renamed. Uh, but apparently everyone in the world decided to go there when we decided to go there, so yeah. we said screw it. We went to uh, get some food and passed out back in the hotel room to live again the next day. All right. <laughs> We're a season pass holder, so we go a lot. So, I mean, I think the only, the only reason why we went to Epcot was to get pizza in Italy. They have, it was kind of funny. We literally went there, had reservations, ate pizza, walked out. Yeah, <laughs> That okay. was all we did. So, Jeff... Jeff say yes, I bought it on Amazon. I'm guessing the um, yes the HDMI USB. Yeah, it's three feet long. Just want to know if it's gonna work. Yeah, it right. should work Chevy fine. Colorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should work fine. We that's the one. That's it's pretty much the one that. Hey, see what's works. up? A hey, Corey from Australia. Either way, blunts up. Yeah, Julio. Okay, let's see, Julio. I have an Alpine ILX double seven. Yeah. Yep. And I want to know if they make anything to to make my iPhone connect to the radio via Bluetooth. No. It's still like plugging into the USB no, cable. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have a Bluetooth chipset built into it. Alpine, well, okay. Supposedly it has Bluetooth built into it, but Alpine, that's rumor. I, I've never actually seen it. Uh, the unit was never made to do anything other than CarPlay. Uh, it was a very short-sighted project that Alpine had. So, and right now, we're probably not going to see the 2017 Alpine products until October now? Yeah. September, October September, is what they're probably. saying. So, the replacement for that is still a long way away. But, yeah, that was definitely a short-sightedness. Now, a workaround. What you could do in order to do just Bluetooth audio is on the back of the radio, there's an aux input. You can buy a... Uh, Bluetooth dongle that plugs into it. So, for example, Rockford makes the uh, RF AUX BT, something like that. We showed that on the show last week. It's just a uh, Bluetooth receiver with a RCA to auxiliary adapter. You can plug that into the AUX, mount the RF piece uh, down in a cup holder behind the dash. It just needs to pair up and that's it. Once it's done, you really don't need to touch it anymore. And you can connect your audio through the AUX jack. The downside to it is you're not gonna have any phone. Hey, you know you so have to. So it's it's that's the suck of it. Yep. But that'll get you wireless Bluetooth audio. All right. So Crosby, Crosby Roberts. Okay, Roberts, say hey guys. I'm looking to put in a Kenwood D DDX 9903s on my 2005 Ram 2500. Do you guys like this head unit? Also. What is the best way to flash mount the two USB on my dash? So, yes, son, we like the head unit. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very popular head unit. It's one of the two most popular head units, which is the 9903 and the 4200. There yeah. again, we talked about that earlier. Pick the one you like. Uh, Pat, no, they don't make that. That never actually came out because it sucked. But Pat makes <laughs> this guy right here, which is their uh, flush mount, what we call the, the nickel. It's a... Um, it's called the USB DMA1. Yeah. USB DMA1. It's a 12 inch flush mount USB adapter. Mm -hmm. What we typically do, and on the 9903, you really only need to flush mount the USB that says iPod on it. The second USB is only for thumb drives. So. You can throw it in the glove box. You can just put that in the glove box. Yeah or someplace else where you don't need to get to it. So typically all we do is we just flush mount this one adapter in, and that's it. Yep. So don't waste your time with the second one. Just oh. put it in the glove box and be done with it. Because Unless you're going to do thumb drive audio. In which case you'd still want to mount it in the glove box because who wants a thumb drive sticking out of their dash? Yeah. That looks kind of cheesy. Okay. Just anyway, <laughs> Breuer say thank you. You little dance help too. Oh yeah, baby. 
Yeah. Do some bloopers. What is that a face? What is that a face? Yeah, don't let me forget. I'm gonna have to. I'll hopefully remember. I okay, I, I finally find. Oh wow, this is this is Corey. I finally find someone on Amazon to send Ferros to Australia. That's oh, pretty cool. Oh, very good. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, okay, that'll work. Yeah, love those Ferros. They are the best. <laughs> that guy needed them today on that amp we put in. The beat. Yeah, we filmed that for the vlog. Which one? The Rockford amp. Oh the yeah, yeah, definitely. That was, that was a train uh, wreck wait for that ah uh, guys okay Ricardo guys I want to have a USB on my factory radio it doesn't have it what do you recommend to do other than buy aftermarket radio with a USB <laughs> um what what are you trying to do with said USB um like pack makes to the iSimple brand they make FM modulators that have RCA inputs and then they also make a USB to RCA so that you can plug the two together and then that USB has a power and ground off of it so like you can plug your phone in play music and charge your phone that would be about the only thing I could see it being useful for uh, but there again you have to have a FM modulator which is this thing right here behind me so essentially what you you have this guy here and it goes to something like this on your dash and then audio just plays through that when you put it on 89.7 uh, if you want something like that, go to iSimple.com and it's there. Uh, they'll have all the products to do that. All right, so Julio say, what are your thoughts about installing an iPad and using it for a unit? You know, I, I used to think that was really cool and I gotta be honest with you, that does nothing for me. I, I might be just getting old. Um, I used to well. I I, I I don't know. I I, I think it's coming gone. But I will say this: uh, for all you guys that do want to do it, hopefully this week we'll get a chance because Kenwood finally updated their phone app. So hopefully this week we'll be able to get some testing done on that with the iPad to see if it actually works. The iPad, uh, unlike Pioneer's Arc app that totally fell short and doesn't work on an iPad, which was a major disappointment. But I'm hoping to get some time this week to actually play with that app. Uh, and with the iPad, of course, film it. That would be wonderful. All right. So, um, Kevin, Kevin, say until portable Bluetooth 4.1 receiver. I totally lost the other question. Kevin. Yep. If you can reply back. No, he wants a better Bluetooth built in. Oh, the for the USB. I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Portable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Why the angry face? What's the angry face for? Who? Why? It's, I don't know. We just got two angry faces. I'm thinking it's the iPad dash kit. I'm oh. sorry. Don't be upset. It's just my <laughs> opinion. It's not worth much. I mean, there again, if the Kenwood works for it, that'll take putting the iPad in in a whole new ball game oh, yeah. and actually make it maybe useful. Yeah. Because right now, right now, the integration between the iPad and the, and the stereo is what sucks. And it, I mean, it's like, yeah, okay, cool. You have all these neat features, <laughs> but. I want to be able to have it actually work. Yeah. You know, hey, and, and that's what's that's what's upsetting. Well, but some people are like, you know, I want a dash. I want it to work right. You know, I want. It, there's no reason why it should suck. Okay, so Cindy, Cindy, say, hey guys, uh, what's up? I picked one of the those Chinese face shakers. Mm -hmm. Had a kicker tweeters in the front of the Honda Pilot that were reading out of face. Changing the wire harness, changing the wiring, and got the same result. It is normal to get the fails reading with the FH160A on the Twitter. What? You lost me. I mean, is it no? You it's lost not. Me it's not. It's it's reading the same, like out of phase. Oh. So he changed oh. the wiring. Okay, Honda Twitter in the dash. Okay. Is the tweeter at the front of the dash mounted on the dash by the glass? The reason why I ask is because, yes, you do run into some phasing problems coming off the glass. What you'd want to do is pop the tweeter out and point it directly at the phase checker in order to check that. Because what happens is you put it, we've, we've run into this problem. Remember when we had that yeah, problem? Yeah, the, the glass. The, it, it's reflecting off the glass. So if you can unscrew or twist or pull the tweeter out and actually aim it at the phase checker, that's what you have to do if it's in the Honda and it, it's yes. up. Yeah. So you just take it out, 
Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, we run into that problem all the time on the tweeters in the corners of the dash. Yeah. And we have to pull the speakers out, aim them at the checker. It's a pain in the butt, but that's what you're running into. It's it's the glass that's doing it. Gotta love it. Sean, Sean, say what's up, guys? Hey, Sean. Uh, for us, I bet in the dash, pass. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. That's the only way sound man's making money. Oh, uh, yeah, man. You know, someone's got to pay for that car to stay on the road. Or uh, him to stay whatever he's doing. Keep the, the iPad Pro, man. Yeah, I know. Rock on. He's making all those new wood dash kits. I watch the videos every now and then. Um, you guys but, are awesome. Keep it up. Keep it. Keep it up. The good work. Okay, Kevin. You are too. You are awesome. Cool, man. So, anyways, with that being said. Um, how did you guys like the vlog this week? Uh, it, it's staying right at, it, I think it stayed right in at about 25 to 27 minutes, which I thought was good. Did you get a chance yeah, to watch yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So we're adding in as much, a ton of extra stuff. So uh, the Facebook Live, um, which we didn't, we did Facebook Live today, but we just got a brand new DJI Osmos uh, handheld thingy so that the video isn't Thank you, shaky. Ricardo. Uh, so that we're gonna, I'm gonna play with that tonight. Hopefully by the end of the week we'll be able to start filming with that for the for the CZ, vlog. CZ, hey man, what's going on? What was yeah. what was the big question before that? Yeah, uh, the big question that was that. What? Thanks, guy. I will check the adapter and change my factory radio. Oh, okay, that yeah. works. You too. guys make the best videos on YouTube. Thank oh, thank you. you. Thank you. What's your opinion on sound deadening and what's the best brand? Whoo. Um. Man, isn't that a great question? That's like Kleenex and Puffs. You know, the the 800-pound gorilla is always going to be Dynamat. People refer to sound deadening as Dynamat, and, and that's why people were... It, it's just the household name. They were first. They were the biggest. Is it the best anymore? Probably not, but I mean, I don't know how many different ways you can make butyl, aluminum foil, stick it, stick in, it in the car. Now it's coming with foam on top. Uh, we use Roadkill uh, yeah. mainly because it's a Stinger product. We we buy all our stuff from them, so it's convenient to buy Roadkill from them. Uh, there's a ton of brands out there now that make really great. Uh, oh, cool! Thanks, Frost. Uh, yeah, uh, we we got we didn't get the their their camera one. We got it so we can plug the iPhone into it. Um, so that ought to be fun to play with. Yeah, yeah. No crap. I just love spending money. <laughs> Anyways. Back to sound deadening. Um, I, you know, as long as you're getting a reputable brand, there's some really good brands out there now, you're good. Where you run into the problem is buying the cheap stuff on like uh, eBay that's like really cheap. That's, that shit sucks and it does, oh sorry, that, that stuff is garbage and it does peel off. Um, you know, we've had a piece of Dynamat, Roadkill, and Hushmat stuck on the back door of our building here for three years now baking in the sun and we didn't even clean off the door we were ashy door panel stuck it right on all three of them have stuck they aren't coming off and they get baked on non-stop so uh, as long as you buy a brand i think you're fine all right so okay so john i literally just poked a hole on my eight inch pro speaker it's Oof. It's accordion cloth. It's a what? Accordion. Accordion cloth. Accordion cloth. Accordion cloth. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way to fix it? Well, it's a pro speaker, so it really probably doesn't move much, um, and it doesn't need to be breathable. I would try putting tape on the back side of it, and then maybe some rub some silicone into it, and then let it dry, and maybe peel the tape off. Uh, so that it's still flexible enough. Okay, um, so Alexander say I would say silent coat. Yeah, silent coat. Yeah, yeah. yeah for I have name. it on mine, and he say it works fine. So yeah, like cool. I said, any 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 decent brand name, read the reviews. I mean, obviously we're gonna use the brand stuff. Um, there's there's a bunch of them out there though. CZ just update my firmware update on my 7800 BT. Cool. Yeah, it was funny you mentioned the firmware update. So we, we had some 6903s that were from February, original stock. It's not a big mover. Everyone wants the 9903. And 
we thought the firmware was up to date on it, and it was weird that all the way in July, mm -hmm. or sorry, what is, no, what, June? Is it June yet? Yeah. March. No. May, all May. the way in May, uh, we still had radios that were, weren't up to date, and we're sitting in the car, and we're like, wait a minute, why, why is the cat, why isn't this work, why is the clock and the compass doing not what it's supposed to, and we're, yeah. we're looking at the one on the board, and we're looking at the one in the car, and I was like, you know what, screw it, let's just throw the update in. And sure enough, it was like, oh wow, we, apparently Paul had changed out the one on the board because I remember updating it and it never got updated. So, yeah, updates are fun. Got to do right. your updates. Uh, Corey, Stinger for the win in our shop. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Thoughts on the Rockford Fuzzgate T1S110? T1S110? Yep. Is that the, that's the Shalomont 10. I think so. It's a very nice woofer, very yeah. well built. Uh, supposedly they have. Uh, I like the way they sound. I was going to do those in my car, but there again, there's a lot of things I want to do in my car I never got around to. Um, yeah, no, I like it. It's very, right. very nice woofer. Jaime, Jaime, say, blog, it's awesome. Show, off, show the wife and she got into kick out. She what? She got a kick out. Oh, got a kick out of it? Watching your videos, yeah. That's good. Kevin, the blog is great. Too down to hurt people giving advice. It's good. What is the benefits to sound ending in the trunk? Um, so if you go and tap the side panels in your car and like they, you can hear the date. So you're trying to trap your sub bass in the trunk and force it into the car. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you're doing. So anytime something moves, you're reducing the amount of bass potential you could possibly have going into the car because uh like when, when you're when you're when, when something of force is coming at you and you're pushing it back like a superhero uh the the, the, the more rigid the surface is that that is pushing against the more that will throw back at the other thing so if you sound dead in the trunk of your car and make the metal more rigid that means when the when your base is exploding in the trunk it's hitting a more rigid surface that equates out to more sound getting into the car. The other thing too is the vibration factor in that you know uh, it'll make the car sound less loud outside, uh, which is good or bad depending on how you like your car to sound. But the more rigid the surface is that the sub is going, the base is going to hit, the more potent potential it has to get back in the car and be louder. That's the long and short of it. All right, uh, good morning from Australia, John. It's good. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey. Okay, Chris. Chris, a looking for a local install crew. Wish I could come down to have you guys do it. Why should I be looking when I visit the place? What question should I ask? That's a really good question. Um, and that you know, okay. Good question. First, you want to see examples of their work. And that's important. Two, just get a t walk into the store, ask if you can see the install bay, talk to the installer. A lot of the times the installers, they're casa non grata, man. You can't talk to these guys. They don't want anything to do with you. And I, and I can understand that because in the middle of the day when I'm working on something and I got to stop what I'm doing, like today, uh, we were working on a Mercedes that we didn't film for anything. And uh, I had to stop what I was doing. I had to come over to here, and I had to deal with three or four different customers. It wasn't just one. Oh, it, wow. it, it turned out to be three or four different customers. Okay. So, and then uh, the whole time I'm holding an antenna adapter that I needed to get back over there to put into this Mercedes. So, yeah, I was like, and then so I was like, all right, everyone, I need to go run. The, and I ran it over. It's so, but anyways, see if you could talk to the installer. Um, and then it comes down to what you actually want them to do. And that is important. So, for example, if you're going to have an amplifier installed, ask them what their thoughts are on the amplifier. Where do they like to put the amplifier? Are they just going to screw it under the seat or are they just going to screw it to the back of the seat? What kind of wire are they going to use? Ask them what kind of wiring they're going to use. I mean, the sales guy should be able to answer that. But there again, if they should have some form of Instagram that shows work uh, on it. Um, Facebook should have some form. If they're proud of what they do, they're going to post it. If they don't post it on a work thing, ask them if they have a private, like Fernando posts most of the five share stuff on his 
uh, Instagram yeah. because it automatically uploads to our five star Facebook page. Yeah. It's as confusing as that sounds. So sometimes the Instagram photos are, are personal, so ask the installer if you can see their personal uh, where, where they post yeah. their pictures of their installs. Yeah. Now whether the install bay is clean or dirty Dirt. That really doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, there's days that our install bay looks like a tornado just went through it. Granted, we try to clean it up at the end of every day or in the morning before we start on a bunch of cars or we sleep in the floor. We want to keep crap off the floor. Um, so not be, I mean, we're semi, well, we're extremely organized, but, you know, um, that's important. Just check out the install bay and where your car is going to be see what it looks like uh you know we have a place here in town that just pulls the car around back and they work on it in a dirt pit yep um yep. you know they throw your seats up on the roof of the car when they're taking it apart because they don't want to put them in the dirt so they're scratching your roof Amen. so that's yeah. that you know it, it just really comes out to that and then of course you know i'm not a big fan of google reviews because they they some of them are good yeah, and you have to look to see through the bs i mean they're they're and, and god yelp is horrible um but you know yeah. we get google reviews that are bad from people that don't even live here because they didn't like a video we put up oh yeah definitely so, um, the, the other the other day these guys like hey man we got a bad google review from a lady in rhode island because she saw a sticker on a car that looked like ours and and gave us a review saying that people with our stickers should learn to drive Okay, like, one yeah. star just totally yeah. killed their Google. Okay. Oh, yeah, man. You know, it's like, thanks. Yeah. Uh, it was an Alpine star sticker, not a yeah. five star sticker. But whatever, you don't know the difference, crazy lady. Anyway. So, yeah, there's, yeah. there's. And there again, talk to, uh, talk to the salesman. If they don't know anything about the radios, ask them if they have somebody that knows something about the radios. You know, a lot of the times when we're selling, or when Paul's selling something, he knows up to a point. And then he's no good. Even though he's a sales guy, he should know everything. Not saying anything there, just saying. Yeah. Um, he has to stop what he's doing, come get me, and then I have to come over here and I have to answer all the questions. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I hope right. that helps. So, hey, Gabriel, como estas? Saludos. Um, do you guys do alarms like CompuStar? No, we do Viper. Okay. Okay, so let's see. I like to be. I, la I lately been in West Palm Beach in October for work. Too bad to guys uh, on the other side of the state. Yeah, West Palm Beach is a drive, yeah. man. That's like a five hour drive. Yeah. Um, and I gotta be honest with you, I have five hours extra to spend in West Palm Beach. I would spend it in West Palm Beach and not driving over here. But thanks for thinking about us. I would much rather stay in West Palm Beach though. Mitchell, cuando tengas tiempo, brother, pasa por acá. Um, Hello guys from Trinidad and Tobago. Chris. Great, great, great place to jet ski. Yeah? I, I, well, I don't know. That's what Marlon says. Ah, uh, Frost is like, Fernando, how long you been working with Five Star? Around like four and a half, five years? Yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's about right. Because yeah. I don't even know how long, I mean, I don't even know how long I've been working here. Yeah, well, I started in 2004. Was it 2004? 2004. I didn't even know when I started. The There was no install bay before I got here, and so I opened the install no, bay. No, 2004, I'm sorry. Oh, two, 2014. <laughs> 2014. Yeah, yes. 2014. I'm like, oh, what? Yeah, uh, so there was no install bay. There was just this store. That's 13. why our store Wait, is sorry. way 13, down. 13, 13, 14, the, around that, yeah, yeah. Down the block. So I started that, worked there for a couple, two years, I think, by myself, and... Uh, you know, it was just to the point to where we needed somebody else to ease the stress on what I had to do because I didn't have enough time to do all the work and deal with all the questions. Okay, so where is the best place to mount an AB and a two-door truck? Well, it depends what kind of truck you have. And where are you going to put and the subwoofers? How big is your AB? Yeah. You know? You know, if you... Yeah, that's a that's a problem we run into all the time. The guy we want to put two tens behind the seat, and then they show up with a surfboard, and we're like, hey, "Ain't gonna happen." Um, Mitchell, al día que tengas tiempo, man, vente para acá, te puedo enseñar fotos que tengo y ya tú sabes, okay? Uh, Taco. Yes. Burrito, enchilada. Oh, that was so okay. Bad. So that's bad. it, man. That was so bad. 
So, anyways, with yeah. that being said, um, what was the other thing that was that was? Uh... Oh, also, all you guys that, that asked me questions this weekend, um, I'm a little behind on the emails because of I'll be answering them. Hopefully tonight. So uh, don't don't worry. There, I had a lot of really good questions this weekend that I just haven't had time to get to. So. 2005 RAM, uh, no subs, just for door speakers. Uh, we typically put it underneath the driver's seat. For yeah. for the RAMs, we go right underneath the driver's seat mm -hmm. for the amplifiers. You can fit a really big oh, yeah, amplifier the JL underneath. 404. Yeah, yeah, that'll fit definitely. perfect underneath. Just put it underneath the, the driver's front seat, yep. and you'll be good to go. That's that's a great place for it. And then you still can keep all that cargo train behind you. Mm -hmm. No big deal. And then if you do want to add a second amp for a subwoofer, uh, you can also put take the jack out from underneath the passenger side and put a second amp there, uh, and just move the jack to, you know, in the back area somewhere. Yeah. All right, Corey, where is the best light up speaker ring, like the ones behind you? Well, this actually isn't a speaker ring. This is um, this is built into the, the kicker into the speakers. speaker. Yeah. Uh, but I believe if you want to get a really nice light up speaker ring, you want to check out Wet Sounds. Wet Sounds makes the uh, plexi like really nice huh? rings underneath for <laughs> that. So check out Wet Sounds. That would be who I'd want to use for that. Cool. There you go. What time is it? It's really late. It's the 7:22. Okay. Well, hey, listen. Um, I think we're winding down. I think you guys probably want to go out. Are we back to Mondays next week? Yes, we will yes. be back to Mondays yes, next week. Honey. We're sorry. We had to take a day off for the holiday. They twisted her arm. I'm still sore. My shoulder still hurts. It was terrible really? having that day off. Oh, it was awesome. Don't let me. Get... Okay. So you guys have a great rest of the week. We look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Bye, Tony. Uh, tomorrow will be Wednesday. Tomorrow will be Wednesday. Yeah, whatever. Yes. Okay. It'll be another day ends and why we'll be here. You guys have a great night. Tuesday. <laughs> Is it right? <laughs> you guys have a great night. Uh, good and night, we'll night see you later. Bye.